So last month, the first ever cycling eSport national championships were held in Brisbane. I was able to compete and secure myself a second place medal. So rewind a month or so ago, I was just scrolling on LinkedIn and came across a post that the Australian eSport national championships were on and were gonna be held in person in Brisbane. What? So I quickly looked into the details. Turns out you had to qualify for this championship by placing at least top four in one of the two qualifier events, one of which had already passed. I had a couple of days before the next one, and it just so happened to be the same day as the Zwift Games Epic. So I still showed up for that. That was in the morning at like 5 a.m. or something, and then the qualifier was that night. So showed up for Zwift Games, just pulled the pin really early, um, and then uh, made sure I focused on qualifying in the evening, of which I did. So next thing I know, I'm just setting to Brisbane. Not the best start of the trip with a weird fainting episode on the plane. The cabin crew were amazing though, and by the end of the flight, I just walked off as if nothing had ever happened. <laughs> Apparently I was out for two minutes. I don't remember really, obviously I was unconscious. And I just drank like a shit ton of salt water because I think it was to do with me cutting out salt and like sugar from my diet for the last like week or two to just make sure my weight was under control. I did, however, receive the advice that I should go get checked out by a doctor. And so as soon as I landed, I got picked up and went to the gym to do my pre-ride. And then I went to the supermarket to buy just a whole lot of crap that I could shove into my body, Pringles, snakes, just everything I'd been depriving my body of that it obviously really craved and missed. And then I went and saw a doctor who said, sorry, you actually have to go to the hospital because we don't have the equipment to like do the scans and stuff to check you out. So it was kind of um, unforeseen. I know how hospitals go. I packed my race bag, ready to go straight to the race and yeah, got checked out. Everything was totally fine as usual. Weird stuff happens to me like this and no one can ever find anything wrong with me. I do have a really low resting heart rate, but they say athletes can be in that range. So anyway, that's a discussion for another time. Fast forward 15 minutes before the mandatory rider briefing and I am headless chicken driving around Brisbane trying to find a park. <laughs> I've gone straight there from the hospital. I'm eating like a frozen meal that they gave me with a stick um, as my pre-race fuel. Uh, but hey, we're there, we're on time, ready for the race more or less. Here's how it went. So first up was semi-finals. My competition was Vicky Whitelaw, Kate Tridden, um, who else do I have in mind? Caitlin Nicholson and Abby McLean. The course is a short three laps of Glasgow Crit Circuit. This is a course that I actually generally perform well on. It's sharp and punchy, and I knew if the pace was easy with limited attacks, pretty much the sprint was mine for the taking. Luckily for me, this is exactly how things panned out. I took the win with a humble but well-timed sprint of 9.8 watts per kilo for about 30 seconds, using my aero power-up in the middle of the final corner and then drafting past the riders that had maybe gone a little bit too early. Absolutely moving. They're in the final throws and Tilly Field, what an incredible acceleration from her. Look at that. Least rated in a sprint, I take it back, Joel <laughs> Spreadborough. What a great ride from her. Perfect drop of an aero power up. She will go straight through to the final. Least rated in a sprint, I I wasn't gonna say anything about this, but I've changed my mind because I feel so awkward. <laughs> it's like the commentators were talking about people's peak power. So on Zwift Power, you can actually see on their page like a summary at the top of their peak powers over, you know, like 15, 30 minutes. But unfortunately, those summaries aren't actually accurate. They're just like a 90 day summary. What you actually have to do is go through people's like race results and it'll be highlighted red if it's a peak power because I'm like this much psycho. I keep an Excel spreadsheet of everybody's peak power. I know, because I've tracked everybody in this race already, that I have the highest low power numbers. And I just felt really awkward because I was like getting credit for being like underdog. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Glad we said that straight. So I ended up taking the win in that semi and it was just a matter of waiting for our final. I remember before the race I said, if you're in the lead in the sprint, don't sit up, because if anyone comes over and you don't make that qualify, you'll never forgive yourself, so. It was an amazing setup, and everybody involved, so like Zwift, Wahoo, QUT, and Oz Cycling did an amazing job. 
at pulling this all together and I was so gutted that they had any hitches at all because I wanted it to really succeed. But to get the schedule back on track, they actually cut the race short, the final. Instead of doing two laps of the Rolling Highlands course, we did one lap. And that definitely works in my favor. I don't think I'm quite as fit and well-trained as the other girls. So keeping my peak power fresh is definitely in my best interest. So in this final, we had Peter Antonello, um, Brianna Samuel, Kate Tridden, Vicky White-Law, and Jess Bemrose, and of course myself. Throughout the race, there was a few attempts um, at attacking, but I was on it every time because there is no way I was letting anybody get away because it would have been absolutely game over. These women can hold very high power for a very long time, so I needed to be on any moves. But in a second group, and that is where Samuel, she's riding brilliantly. The run into the line on this course is uphill, so I knew a strong one minute was on the cards. I had another aero power up for the finish, so I wanted to save this for that sort of middle section where it flattens off a bit and hopefully it lasts to the line where it also flattens off. We're within one kilometer of the finish line now. I expected people to go early. Here's Brianna Samuel pushing once more. It wasn't quite as hard as I was expecting. I don't think people were quite maxing it yet. So I thought if it stays this way, I'll just pace off the leaders and then use my kick over the top to win the race. Um, so coming into the actual, where the actual climb starts, if you watch Kate Tridden at the back in the pink, she kicks at about here um, and just like all out effort. And I had a choice to make stick to my plan or do an all out sprint to follow Kate. I was worried about that. I didn't want to potentially lead out the other riders and they kick over the top of me at the line. So I banked on her maybe dying off and I stuck to my safe-ish plan. Um, but unfortunately for me, she does not die off. There she is doing a phenomenal one minute effort over the top and taking the win. I was able to kick as you see there and get the second place over the top of Vicky and Peter. Kate was definitely such a deserving winner. I think she did a one minute PB in this race. So um, kudos to her. She absolutely um, deserved that win. I think it's a, 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 a combination of emotion and exhaustion down in the camp at the moment. That, that was absolutely sensational, getting a hug from Tilly Field. So again, I'm pretty happy with a second place though, because this was a race that I almost didn't back myself enough to even show up to. And it was a very like YOLO spontaneous decision to fly up to Brisbane, to qualify and then fly up to Brisbane and do this race. I almost think there's a little secret in that though, when you don't have that pressure on yourself, paradoxically, it almost gives you this confidence, like to just try things and be bold and believe in yourself because the worst that's gonna happen is you'll get the result that you think you were gonna get anyway. When you're there to experience and have fun, you're able to not let that pressure deter your mindset and any setbacks are just, you know, things to add to the story and fuel the outcome. So I'm glad that I was able to do what I do from my garage in front of people. I think that was a really significant milestone in the world of sport. To be honest, esports is the future, and the quicker we begin to embrace and respect it, the better. So, can't wait to see where things head, but I'm already excited for next year, and you better believe I'll be on Zwift training, getting fitter, more experienced, ready to hit it. I'd love to see you there next year.